list of all the great music that deals with mortality would be endless. But mixed deep in there, one album stands out as maybe the most blunt, real and outspoken of them all. Namely, Sun Kill Moon's 2014 release Benji, a brutally honest meditation on death, loss and dealing with grief. Singer-songwriter Mark Kosalek's unfiltered lyrics divided his fanbase, but regardless, the album became a huge favorite with critics. And that's not really a surprise, because there's no shortage of poignant life lessons to be learned from this incredibly bold record. Let's take a look. Mark Koslick might just be one of the most unpredictable figures in all of music. His massive output, including everything from alternative rock to folk, classical, spoken word and even Christmas carols. And he isn't without controversy either, gaining a rather infamous reputation for his foul stage banter and for a certain diss track. Truly, with Koslick you can never really be sure what lies ahead because he's always followed his own path without giving a damn what anyone thinks. However, what is certain is that he's one of popular music's most talented and underappreciated storytellers. Born and raised in the city of Massillon, Ohio, Koslick spoke briefly about his humble beginnings. Fun was throwing corn at someone's window, smoking pot behind a store, skipping school, listening to Pink Floyd, in his late teens, Koslick left the Midwest for California and teamed up with Gordon Mack, Jerry Vessel and Anthony Kutsos to form Red House Painters. The quartet would come to release a total of six albums and help pioneer the sound that became known as Slowcore. Contrary to the explosive grunge dominating the charts, Red House Painters didn't shy away from turning down the volume and slowing things down a lot. Their long, melancholic ballads, characterized by Koslick's bleak and confessional lyrics, have since become essential listening for any fan of alternative music. Without you, what does my life amount to? After Red House Painters disbanded, Koslick returned in 2002 as Sun Kill Moon. The debut album, Ghosts of the Great Highway, proved to be a fresh new start and garnered critical acclaim. Rightly so for its dreamy instrumentation, gorgeous arrangements and lush vocals. I'd even deem it the quintessential folk rock album of the 2000s. By the end of the decade, Koslick, heavily inspired by the Spanish virtuoso Andres Segovia, decided to try something different and make a record of just him singing and playing a nylon stringed guitar. Not really that strange of a move, since he also happens to be an excellent classical guitar player. Look no further than the beautiful opening track Ole Sund. The alternate tuning and elegant fingerstyle give off very much of a Nick Drake vibe. This newfound love for the classical guitar would come to influence the sound of much of Koslick's future output, not the least Benji. What does it take to write a song? It's like a feeling, you know, that overcomes you, and it could, it doesn't ha have to be because something happened. Nobody had to die, or you didn't have to break up with somebody. You didn't have. To well, contrary to what Koslick says here. When penning his 2014 magnum opus, a lot of people, sadly, had done just that. On Benji, we hear the story of everyone from his second cousin to his uncle, neighbors, friend Brett, grandmother, her first husband, James Gandolfini, two people in a plane crash, victims of mass shootings, and I could go on. In fact, there are so many that the album almost ends up feeling like a musical obituary with Koslick paying his respects to all of them through his peculiar lyrics. And it's really in the lyrics where the heart and soul of this album are at. Koslick crafting beautiful, poetic and truly heartbreaking narratives about life and death out of seemingly the most trivial, down-to-earth things. 
Though the lyrics were already very meta on his last couple of albums, Benji saw Koslik taking it to the next level, almost as if he's spewing out entire diary pages of internal monologues, sparing no details about everything from his aching back to what he had for breakfast, the interior design of a bar, the time of his flight, and even vivid accounts of early sexual experiences. Sort of like Morrissey, Nick Drake and Charles Bukowski all came together and had a baby. Thanks to this very specific lyrical approach, the tracks on Benji practically take on the shape of short stories rather than traditional songs, with the music reduced to more of a vehicle to carry the narrative forward and at times amplify certain plot points. Anyway, the album begins by setting the tone immediately, Koslik telling a heartbreaking account of his second cousin, Carissa, who died 35 years old in a freak accident fire. The track is a real gut punch as we are sucked into this tragic story of a woman and mother of two who all of a sudden lost her life just as she was heading to work. Yeah, if this doesn't make you stop what you're doing and consider the fragility of life, I don't know what will. We don't just raise two kids and take out your trash and die. On track three, Truck Driver, Koslik goes on to tell the story of how his uncle, oddly enough, had died in the exact same way some years earlier. He explained in an interview, People out here didn't know what I was talking about when I told them what had happened. But anyone who grew up in the Midwest knows what I'm talking about. If you live in the country, you burn trash, and occasionally accidents happen. In my uncle's case, it was a gas can. In Carissa's, it was aerosol. What's most remarkable about these two tales, therefore, is not the matter in which they died. It's Koslik's ability to paint such a vivid and human portrait of them, telling us the small but important details. Like that his uncle would have liked the fact that Kentucky Fried Chicken was served at his funeral. The songs are very specific in this way, but we relate to them anyhow. For as human beings, we know what it's like looking for those gleams of light in the darkness. Babies were crying, Kentucky Fried Chicken was served. Koslik also ponders mortality in a broader scope. Pray for Newtown sees him recounting his thoughts on a handful of mass shootings. Most notably, the Sandy Hook school shooting. The guitar line more urgent and menacing this time, very fitting to the dark nature of the song. And though giving the impression of a protest song, Koslik isn't preaching rebellion or social change or anything of the like. Instead, he simply asks us to take a moment to think of the victims and their families. Moment to think about the families who lost so much in and after arguably the darkest song on the entire album, we get, in my opinion, the most beautiful. Jim Wise tells the tale of Koslik's dad's friend who awaits trial after Mercy killing his wife. Here, Koslik switches the acoustic guitar for a gentle electric piano that perfectly conveys the sense that sometimes death isn't necessarily something horrible and sad, but that there are layers and that it sometimes can also come as a relief. In the last verse, Koslik points out a red cardinal perched on the empty bird bath, a beautiful line that in a way summarizes the entire album. Cardinals are birds that carry a lot of symbolism, for example, strength to those in need during difficult times, and that those we have lost will live forever so long as we keep their memory alive in our hearts. Mortality is something that has always eluded us, a mysterious path we all must take but truly will never understand. Benji is simply Mark Koslick's way of trying to make sense of it all, this terrifying, inevitable thing greater than all our measly successes, failures and fortunes. And even though it's a very, very sad record, Koslick wants us to know that it's not all gloom. Benji is also a beautiful homage to childhood nostalgia and a reminder to always recognize where we come from. A life-affirming album that aims to see the beauty in the simplest of things, whether it's a hug from our mom, seeing the ocean, or the joy of going to the cinema. Koslick explained the album title. 
It's named after the film Benji, a movie I saw in 1974 in a Los Angeles movie theater when I was visiting my grandmother. It's just this nice childhood memory I have. The record is filled with so much darkness. I wanted to bring some light, some contrast. I feel love all around. Benji, a delightfully different motion picture starring Peter Brecht, Christopher Conley, Patsy Garrett. Benji was released in February of 2014 to Universal Acclaim. Fact magazine named it the best album of the year and wrote in their review. A record whose main theme may be death, but whose power comes from Koslick's vivid celebration of life. Ultimately, Benji encourages us to wake up every morning, grateful we live to see another day, and remember those before us who are no longer that fortunate. And it tells us that despite the grief, sadness, loss, misfortune and injustice, there's always something to cherish, something to live for, even if it's something as seemingly insignificant as a plate of blue crab cakes. Blue crab cakes.